going to have a conversation about values, okay? You're going to tell us what you see about these different countries from your particular perspective, okay? From where you sit. My wife calls it a person's sociological address. Every single person in this room um, has just a different way of seeing things, right? Because everyone goes through something different. Right? Everyone sees something different. Everybody has different experiences. We, we often get stuck arguing with one another or whatever, having these conversations about the right way to see something, the wrong way to see something. But the truth is, every one of these people in here has a different vision of the world because every person has walked a unique path and has a unique background, just like all of you, right? So, but as best, so it's impossible for any of you to represent any of these places, right? But the thing is, like, people just have different sensibilities about the way they walk through the world. And if you read those things up there on the screen, you can see, like, the, how these, t in general, this is in general, this isn't across the board because everybody's different, right? But in a general sense that these two gentlemen here are, like, are much more likely to walk through the world like what you see in the left-hand column there than these two young women here. They're more likely to walk through the world with what you see in the right column. And those are really different as much as they're, you know, they, they matter for people's lives. If you look at those two columns, this is a radically different orientation of the world. If you think about the U.S. sitting down and trying to have a conversation, some kind of negotiations with the, China, with the Chinese. So the US government and the Chinese government, and you're coming at it from these very different perspectives. This is game, this is game changing, right? This is really game changing. So let me just start with you. Um, do you, what do you do? Like, what, what do you like to do? Like, what, what, do you have any, like, what kind of hobbies do you have? Um, I don't really have hobbies because I'm really busy. Uh-huh. What are you so busy with? I go to school and I work. Yeah? Yeah. And what do you study? I study kinesiology. Uh huh. And uh -huh. I want to be a physician assistant. A physician. And are you, how, how are your grades? I'd say pretty well. I'm graduating. I'll talk right into that. Pretty well. I'm graduating a year early. Yeah? And are, like, are you, like, uh, do you consider yourself smart or do you? No. Yeah? No. Okay. How about, yeah. Danielle, right? Yeah. How about you? What do you do? Um, like, I mean, here I like to hang out with my yeah, like friends. Hop. Okay, go ahead. Like, yeah. when I'm, like, not doing school, like, I love going out, like, to the frats and stuff. Yeah. And, like, hang out with my friends. I mean, if I have time to do something, I will. Like, other than school, obviously. My major's finance, so um, it's, like, the business school. Yeah. And are, are I you... Mean, and, and how is... Are you good at it? Are you, like... I mean... I have the GPA to get into it, so I'd say it's not that bad, but. Uh, so I like photographing and. You have photography? And I bought my camera for photo class, but I dropped it because to get into this one. So. Yeah, oh, you, oh really? Oh, that was unfortunate. unfortunate, right? You could, dude, you do photography? Can you take just for my hobby? Yeah, yeah you can take some pictures but in here. I didn't bring my camera today. Oh, not today, but another day. Again. So are you? Are you? And how are you at the uh, at photography? Are you good? No, it, it's just for my hobby. Like I just got into class for yeah. first class. What else do you do? Um, I like soccer. Playing yeah. soccer with my. You play team. soccer? There's a Korean team. Yeah. It's how long cool. are you? Are you? Are you good at it? Maybe they don't. They don't understand my skills. <laughs> how, and how, uh, how long have you been playing? Pretty much from high school. Yeah? Team. Okay, choosy. How about you? What do you do? Um, for now, uh, I'm doing a startup. Uh, if you look at my shirt, it's, it's the yeah. same I'm doing now, the startup. Dude. Yeah. You get can, a, get uh, a shot it's, of that. It's a, uh, it's a delivery platform, like the DoorDash or Uber Eats, but especially for the uh, Chinese restaurant. You can... Uh, locally? Uh, yeah, now so it's So could locally. I like order some egg rolls right now? 
Uh, no, uh, our <laughs> our app is still in the alpha phase and is not available on the App Store. Uh, and we are now uh, doing the testing in the final phase, and it might be available in the end of this month. And uh, for for my hobby, maybe uh, negotiate and talking with the venture capital, including yeah. the launch box in the PSU. Dude, yeah, killing it, man. So are you? Uh, are you? Uh, so what do you study? Hmm? What do you study? Uh, if you look at my Asia face, maybe you can guess. <laughs> yeah. Business. Uh, no. Accounting. Uh, Engineering. Yes. Com yeah. Right. <laughs> I was trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. I was actually going to say English or history or something, but yeah, you know. I'm, I'm a double major. I'm computer science and math. So are you are you smart? Uh, I think yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you right. know, the computer science and math are really challenge subject. Yeah, okay, yeah. All right, so listen, man, the reason I asked, yeah, it was interesting. So the, you can't, we're just going down here having, so you can turn around and look at this, right? But in, in East Asian cultures, the thing you see, and I see this all the time because I, I do a lot of work, um, it's a lot of work in Korea, uh, but I also um, have a lot of ex experience talking and working with people in China. And you see um, in Japan, and you see this sort of underestimating of abilities, right? Both, both of you were like, oh, you know, okay, but you're probably, usually were like, I think so, but probably actually you're really, really talented. And you said like, no, not really, right? But often, a lot of times in the West, you know, it just becomes this thing where you know, it's not a bad thing. It's just the way to move forward in the world. It's like with a certain degree of confidence, you know, that you say, and a confidence that you put out into the world because that's the way we come to see one another and come to understand one another, right? So, well, in the two of you, put that confidence out there. It's not seen as like bragging. It's not seen as a problem. It's just like, okay, that's cool. You're asserting your individuality. But these two gentlemen right here, when they put that same kind of confidence out, then that's not seen, the, you know, they, in, in, in the Eastern world, it's, you're, you're much more kind of, your, your center of focus, it's like, a, it's like a radar, you know, you're like pinging, right? Like sonar, you know, how it's sonar, bro. How about that, sonar? It's kind of, you're pinging all the time. And um, in, in Korea, you call it nunchi, right? Can you, it's, it's really like hard to explain. Being conscious with others. Being conscious of others? Mm -hmm. It's like social intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of, right. Do you think I have a, a lot of nunchi? No, you don't. I don't? <laughs> you just called me out. I just well, call I you. Uh, uh, do you think he? <laughs> <laughs> right, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so the idea is your sonar is operating, and your sonar is sort of pinging what what other people in your orientation are thinking and feeling, and like you want to be at their level. Like you don't want you don't want to be higher than you don't want to be lower than. You want to sort of be together. If everyone's together, if there's some kind of community, we all move forward together, and it's a good thing. Right? This is, so when you think about like negotiating, for example, with China and Korea as just some kind of example like this, how different it would be than negotiating with the United States. In the US, like, you know, we want to like exert the force, we want to show that we're like, we've got this, the whole thing. And in China and, and, and in Korea, there's so much about saving, it's face, saving face and being like, you know, we're going to make sure that we don't put you down any further than we would want to put down, or we don't elevate you any further than we would want to be elevated. And so that would matter. There's, you know, it would, it would matter how you walk through. Reputation is really, really big. The friends from the Korean just uh, talked about what I'm talking, what, what I'm trying to talk. Yeah, it's a win-win strategy. Uh, if you don't want others to, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's good, it's never, uh, it's never not good to let others down. To like really hold other, push others down. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's never, not, never good. Yeah. So it's better if you can win while kind of somehow uplifting others. Yes. Yeah, and that's a, that's a huge, you know, like it's a, it's a huge like way of of 
it's a hugely different way of seeing it. And also focusing on the things you don't do well. You know, you know, Chinese recently r- really grow fast, and uh, the previous generations, the uh, like, like my uh, grand- grandparents' generation and ours thing is really different mm-hmm. from their uh, experiences. Uh, they, they think their experiences will really help us, but uh, we already know that their uh, their generations think is already not applied to the now current world. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, some sometimes they are trying to be uh, good and teach the things that they think good and try to uh, use their they think the good way to like guide you to teach you, but some sometimes that will really let you down. Uh, the, the, like, like, like the, um, but I, but I know their, their hearts or their, um, their, their thinking initially is good, but uh, the the way is kind of different from from the now nowadays world. Pew Research looked at 17 more advanced economies, and they asked people what makes life meaningful, and just wanted to know like what is it, and they gave them all these different. Um, uh, options here of really kind of focusing on what, what makes your life meaningful. So I want you all, the four of you, to look at this and, and I want you all to answer that. I would say health. Health, okay, what else? Education. Health and education for you? Okay, what do you think, of, what do you think Mexicans would say? I think they would say family and spirituality or freedom or uh-huh. and religion. Uh huh. And, and Danielle, how about you? Um, right now, I would say friends and education. Yeah, and what do you think Americans would say? Like, anyone... What's like, the top choice for Americans? I'd probably say, like, freedom and occupation, maybe. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Society. Yeah? Yeah. Yun Song. How, how, yeah. About, how about you? What, do you th- what, what is so it for you? I want to pick two, but I want to combine them. Yeah. It's, one is material well-being and one is freedom. Material so well-being like and freedom. Materially freedom. Yep. Okay. Do, do you know what it means? All right. And Chuzi, how about you? Uh, for me, I value most uh, friends and the health. Friends and health? Okay. So it's interesting that you say that. So here is, I'm going to show you. Um, so I saw this and I... Dude, first off, it's so fascinating that uh, Yun Song, that you answer material well-being as your top. So can you go to the next slide? So you're gonna, you're gonna, th- I'm gonna just leave this up here for a hot minute and kind of just take a look at that. We do not have, we don't have China up here and we don't have Mexico up here, but I, I know I can tell you what it's gonna be for them. But look at how everybody says family except Spain, which says health first and families down here, which is so fascinating. Um, South Korea, which is material well-being, which is exactly what you said. And Taiwan is society. And some of Taiwan, some of the society for Taiwan is largely because um, of just the relationship right now with mainland China. So in Mexico, you think people would say family first. So can you say more about that? Like, what is that? So growing up in my culture, even though I grew up in Texas and in the U.S., my parents still really embodied the Mexican culture. Mm -hmm. And that being said, um, growing up, my support system was my family. And that's not to say that I didn't have friends, but my parents were just very strict and they definitely prioritized like health, school and like sports over social life, as Mm -hmm. they would call it. So I was sort of limited to like one social outing a mm-hmm. week up until like, well, until I sort of just like did what I wanted and just mm-hmm. like didn't listen to them. So that's, so this is you, but you would say, but in Mexican culture. In Mexican culture, they definitely prioritize their family the most, I would say. Mm-hmm. And we are all very close to our families. I feel like in the U.S. it's very like first family, like your cousins and your grandparents and that's it. But in Mexico, it's like, the whole family tree. Yeah, like everybody is a cousin. Yeah. You know, and how about, and Danielle, how about you? Like, what, what, do you, what do you make of the fact that in the U.S. family is first also? Because do you um, think most people around the world see that? I was actually really surprised by that myself. Uh-huh. What surprised you? Um, because, like, in the United States, I feel like, cause, like, compared to, like, what you just said, like, 
kids are a lot more like free and can kind of do whatever they want. I mean, depending on the household, but from what like I've grown up with, like I can go out as much as I want, like see my friends and my friends are the same way. And like, yeah, you get together with like your extended family with like holidays and stuff. But I'm, I'm actually really surprised it said family first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, people like they love hanging out with their families here, but I wouldn't say that like our lives revolve around spending time with our families. So what, when, is that what you do you think people in your community in your particular community would mm -hmm. say something similar? Um, I mean, I like again, like it depends on the household, but like. I guess so, yeah. Like, I mean, the high school I went to, like, everyone would always hang out and, like, uh -huh. we didn't, like, I never met someone who, like, would be like, oh, like, I'm staying in to spend time with my family tonight, like. Yeah, which is odd because that's how we envision it mm -hmm. and that's how we envision it in the U.S., but this is, so even though if we don't spend time with the family, it doesn't mean that we do. Yeah. It means this is what in our minds are, is most valuable to us, right? So we might have one way we see things, but then in the other sense, it's like, no, but this is how I feel and this is how I think. Uh huh. Go ahead, anything else? I mean, I feel like you could look at it from like a different perspective. Like for me, like my family's like my support system. It's mm -hmm. so, like they, like since I was little, like it's always been about like education, going to college, getting a job. Like I feel like a lot of people in America like also have that where it's like your family pushes you to succeed. Uh -huh. So that could also be something. Uh huh. Yeah, Carolina. I wanted to add something for the U.S. I personally feel that it's not necessarily family, but more of like family values that the U.S. values. Yeah. It's like what uh -huh. family means to them, not necessarily the actual entity and like the physical being of like mm -hmm. a group of like four, you know? Mm -hmm. So you may spend very little time with your family in the U.S., but, but still the, the embodiment of the, that right. idea, like you've embraced that idea to some degree. Uh-huh, yeah. I think that's, I think you're right on with that. Uh-huh. Yun Sung, how about, how about, what, what is it that led you, what, how, how, you, you said material well-being, like you were right on with this. Like, what, what is so, that? What's that mean? Before I begin, I admit, I saw your research and I should have answered the material well-being in the first mm -hmm. place, but in my personal, personal thoughts, um, so, Koreans who grew up in 1950s, which is our um, ancestors and mm -hmm. my fathers, um, they went through Korean War in their um, early childhood, and some of them um, lost their family in the war, and the way to protect their family was to um, go to America or go to mm -hmm. other countries in that time. Or and to make or to make money. And those cost money. Yeah. Yep. I mean why most people pick metro well being in the first place is because they want to protect their family. Mm -hmm. I think it's the most um, thing they consider about it. So so what's interesting then is that so what you're saying is even though people are so the, the number one, what's interesting about that with Korea is not only is it the number one, the only country that said material well-being came first, it was the country that had more people, of all the people that responded, it was the one country that had more people who said, I only have one answer for this. It's, I'm not even gonna rank them, like first, second, third, fourth, I just have one thing, and that's material well-being and nothing else, right? By far and away. So what's what's, interesting is that when you say material well-being it means something very different than just the idea like hey i'm just out here for myself like i'm gonna do a like choosy here i'm gonna have a startup and i'm gonna make a lot of money and i'm gonna buy a ferrari or whatever and that pig is not being a millionaire or being so rich like elon musk or so the key is is you don't really want to be super rich you just want to be comfortable to just keep my family safe Mm -hmm. take, take, keep the family safe. Okay. Which, is, which matters, right? Like here, which is interesting, right? Like in the U.S., so think about this. In the U.S., we're saying, and for both of you, right? W you know, it's like, okay, we're going to put family first, but I'd like to be super rich, and then I can do whatever I want, and then that kind of is maybe I'll help me or maybe help my family. And you're saying, like, no, no, the primary thing would be if I'm going to make money, it's to help my family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Choosy, how about you? What did you say again? Uh, 
The first is the friends, and the second is house. Okay. I see. Uh, so China isn't up there, but where do you think China would be if it was up there? I think it's uh, still the family, because uh, uh, I already treat my friends as already my family. Uh, probably the reason I didn't choose the family because I haven't uh, seen my parents face to face like uh, two, two and a half years. And you know the family, uh, you have two identities as uh, in the family. One, you are the children, you are the child, one, you are the parent. Uh, for me, if uh, I'm going to be the parent in the future, maybe I will also value the family as my most. Yeah. And if I didn't uh, come to the state and uh, just stay in my, my hometown and come back uh, every day in the uh, night, in the evening, after I finish my school, I could meet my parents and doing the dinner together, I will also value the family as my friend.